The desire to be connected with the cosmos reflects a profound reality. For we are connected, not in the trivial ways that the pseudoscience of astrology promises, but in the deepest ways. Our little planet is under the influence of a star. The sun warms us, it drives the weather, it sustains all living things. Four billion years ago, it brought forth life on Earth. But our sun is only one of a billion trillion stars within the observable universe. And those countless suns all obey natural laws, some of which are already known to us. How did we discover that there are such laws? If we lived on a planet where nothing ever changed, there wouldn't be much to do. There'd be nothing to figure out. There'd be no impetus for science. And if we lived in an unpredictable world where things changed, in random or very complex ways, we wouldn't be able to figure things out. And again, there'd be no such thing as science. But we live in an in-between universe where things change all right, but according to patterns, rules, or as we call them, laws of nature. If I throw a stick up in the air, it always falls down. If the sun sets in the west, it always rises again the next morning in the east. And so it's possible to figure things out. We can do science, and with it, we can improve our lives. Human beings are good at understanding the world. We always have been. We were able to hunt game or build fires only because we had figured something out. There once was a time before television, before motion pictures, before radio, before books, the greatest part of human existence was spent in such a time. And then, over the dying embers of the campfire, on a moonless night, we watched the stars. The night sky is interesting. There are patterns there. If you look closely, you can see pictures. One of the easiest constellations to recognize lies in the northern skies. In North America, it's called the Big Dipper. The French have a similar idea. They call it la casserole, the casserole. In medieval England, the same pattern of stars reminded people of a simple wooden plow. The ancient Chinese had a more sophisticated notion. To them, these stars carried the celestial bureaucrat on his rounds about the pole of the sky, seated on the clouds and accompanied by his eternally hopeful petitioners. The people of Northern Europe imagined yet another pattern. To them, it was Charles's wain or wagon, a medieval cart. But other cultures saw these seven stars as part of a larger picture. It was the tail of a great bear, which the ancient Greeks and Native Americans saw instead of the handle of a dipper. But surely the most imaginative interpretation of this larger group of stars was that of the ancient Egyptians. They made out a curious procession of a bull and a reclining man, followed by a strolling hippopotamus with a crocodile on its back. What a marvelous diversity in the images various cultures saw in this particular constellation. But the same is true for all the other constellations. Some people think these things are really in the night sky, but we put these pictures there ourselves. We were 
hunter folk. So we put hunters and dogs, lions and young women up in the skies. All manner of things of interest to us. When 17th century European sailors first saw the southern skies, they put all sorts of things of 17th century interest up there. Microscopes and telescopes, compasses and the sterns of ships. If the constellations had been named in the 20th century, I suppose we'd put their refrigerators and bicycles, rock stars, maybe even mushroom clouds. A new set of human hopes and fears placed among the stars. But there's more to the stars than just pictures. For example, stars always rise in the east and always set in the west taking the whole night to cross the sky if they pass overhead. There are different constellations in different seasons. The same constellations always rise at, say, the beginning of autumn. It never happens that a new constellation suddenly appears out of the east, one that you never saw before. There's a regularity, a permanence, a predictability about the stars. In a way, they're almost comforting.